Hello and welcome to the very first episode of the Korg Microcast podcast. My name is Adam Whittle and I am joined today with Andrew Pollin. How are you, sir? Really good, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. And the Korg UK demonstrator slash guru slash god... Demigod. Demigod, Luke Edwards. Hello. Hooray, how are you, sir? I'm very well, how are you, mate? I'm very well, thank you. So, the idea with this podcast is to talk about everything Korg and Samson for the particular month. But obviously we're in July at the minute. So we've got lots of uh, months to catch up on. So I think we should go all the way back to January. I agree. So yeah. let's go all the way back. It's so a big it, month. It's a yeah. big month. So January we had the NAM show and we announced, um, well, lots of new products, but I guess the headlining product for us was the Korg Mini Log. The game changer. The game the changer yeah. that is the Mini Log. So Luke, do you want to tell us a bit about the Mini Log? Why we all need to buy one? Why it's amazing? Yeah. Well, it's just... It is an amazing synth. It's um, it's a little bit of a, a different one for us in that we've obviously had the mono, monotrons, we've had the monotribe, then we had the Volkers, we've had the MS20, the R policy, but this one is not really modelling or mimicking any other kind of synth. It's just a great four-part analog synth um, with uh, full MIDI implementation as well, so it makes a great controller. Mm. It's got this really cool, neat little um, display on it which shows it has an oscilloscope on it, so you can mm. see the waveform. You get that real nice bit of visual feedback, which is quite unique as well. I think it's great for people learning. It really is, Because yeah. you can yeah. actually see it rather than... Do you know what I mean? I often find that people that maybe play some of the other products that we do, you know, can sometimes get a bit baffled, a bit confused. So if you're quite new to this kind of um, analogue kind of synth, I think it's great to have that visual aid. It is cool because you can actually... You, you like go to an initial like sound, you, you play a sound, and then it's like, oh, that's what a saw wave looks like. Well, yeah, that's what a sine yeah. wave looks like. And then it's, uh, it's kind of educational as well. Yeah. Another email coming through. And it's telling you, isn't it? Isn't it? Oh, yeah, come yeah. on, man. Oh, there we go. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry about that. You brought it in Yarmouth. Just yeah. <laughs> the other thing with it as well, though, it's not just sort of beginners. It, you've, we've got all sorts of people that are going for it and just screaming for them, haven't we? Everyone, yeah. If someone yeah. hasn't got one, they generally want one. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. People have been using synths for years, people are brand new to it. And it's been very crit- critically acclaimed as well. I mean, it won best in show at NAM. Sound on Sound gave it a great review. Basically, all the reviews have been fantastic as well. Yeah, so. and, and, and for me, one thing that's really good about it, of course, is the build quality. I mean, yeah. you've got, I mean, you've got the the actual sort of knobs themselves, if you will, go right into the chassis itself, so you don't get any wobble or anything like that. And it's just really, really well made. Yeah, the mm. top's got aluminium. It's got that beautiful yeah. wood wood at the back as well. The wood pattern that just looks yeah. classy, doesn't Can it? Can you remember just, what wood it was? It's, it's something, it's something like, like it's tree wood, isn't it? It's Japanese. <laughs> <Yarko or something laughs> tree like wood. <laughs> <laughs> Japanese. Uh, that's the one. Dra- Japanese it tree wood. It begins with P. Yeah. I Pikachu. That. That's it. Yeah. Or is that a <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> it, anyway, it looks great. It's kind of, I think, going back to a bit of a retro look kind of style at the back I think more more keyboards should have wood on it I don't Absolutely know how yes. you I feel about I'd agree that, with that especially yeah. if they're really good but have, yeah. you, have you played one have you tried one I've tried one yeah I've done many a demo on it and a few videos out there if you care to watch them and yeah it's just a great synth to be honest it's very versatile that's what I like about it as well being um, polyphonic you can do all types of different sounds you great basses great leads sound effects nice pads which obviously we couldn't really do with things like the MS-20 as good as it was Mm. It's only one no poly, so and yeah. you can save presets, can't you? Which is another huge thing. Yeah, you can't do massive. Some of the yeah, so um, you can save presets, and you can, um, as I said before, use it as a MIDI controller. So every every single controller on there outputs and receives uh, MIDI CC messages. So. And the obvious game changer, of course, is you can play Pong. You know. Oh yeah, that's the main thing. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so how do you play Pong? Basically, when you boot it. You can move any controller, but it's most fun to use the joystick. And then this little game comes up, basically, as it's booting. That's is, amazing. Uh, yeah, which is like Breakout. So you get a ball, bat and a ball, and then it has oh, the mini log logo, oh, oh. and then you can break it down. I heard the rumour about this, and is it right, if you complete the game, there's a little message there, and is it something along the lines of it tells you what the next product that's coming is? <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. I couldn't no, no, what does what happen? I've, I've never Legend. done it. I can't do it. I'm, I'm not sure going to divulge it. You're going to have to go and just try Does it, it actually it? say something? It does, yeah. Oh, it see, does. that's... Yeah, if you manage to win it. Right, I'm on that, I'm on that. So yeah, so the check that out, it's the mini log. And then the, the next product, which kind of was had a, you know, what we call a soft launch at the end of last year, was the Korg B1 Piano. So obviously, what I love about this instrument is 
It's 120 knots polyphony, of course, it's uh, 88 weighted keys. It's got string resonance. And uh, a product at that kind of price point, uh, you know, it's just incredible. You know, it was why, you know, you know, normally string resonance is on products at over a thousand pound, and to get that at an entry level price point is just unreal. It is good. I really like the styling of it as well because it's kind of they've rounded it off a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So the previous model, the SP one seventy, which it replaces, was uh, it was a good product, but it was yeah, it wasn't the most inspiring to look at. So the one they've no. done is they've tried to make this one. A bit more stylish, and it comes in white as well, doesn't it? Yeah, Black and yeah. White, yeah. And even saying that, I mean, this month, uh, I believe July, we've now got the B One SP in stock, which is obviously the same product with a stand and a pedal unit, but the stand matches the unit, so it's not just like a square wooden stand. It's yeah, rounded. It the curves, yeah, which it? is yeah, quite. Like, I didn't. I didn't yeah. realize that until I actually saw one that it, it's it's like rounded to match the actual uh, piano. So just a bit more about it. It's got eight sounds so you've got your standard kind of organ uh, piano harpsichord uh, usual sounds that are in there available in black and white as we said 88 keys you've got this mfb which is motion feedback uh, speaker technology so am i right in saying that no matter how loud it is it's impossible to distort the speaker yeah. is that right is that, yeah yeah it's pretty cool yeah. how that it's works it's fluid speaker design isn't it? so yeah. the way it moves there's no distortion points very yeah. clever yeah so uh, the, and then again it's got the, the the stand that we've talked about uh, and it in, you know you can get it with the uh, stand and the PU2 pedal unit the other thing with the sounds is they are brand new sounds aren't they they've they been are, sampled yeah. for this unit so they're yeah. not oh, right. I didn't, didn't realise that right. I knew the piano was new but yeah that's, yeah, that's pretty cool matched to the action and the <clears throat> speaker system as well so obviously that's important and, and another thing at this price point that's really good the pedal unit that you can buy for it has three pedals so you've got obviously uh, sustain, sostenuto and dampener you've not just yeah. got like a pedal, one pedal on a yeah. wire, plastic thing. It's actual piano style, and the the pedal that comes with the standard B one, again, is a single sustain pedal, but it's a piano style. Yeah, it's not just like a little square. Latch. No, it's an actual yeah. proper piano foot yeah. switch, which is pretty cool. Yeah, you know, for, that, price. for that price point. Great so yeah, value. so yeah. that's the B one. So that's available now. Buy one today. <laughs> At the very least, you need to get down to your local dealer and you need and to go and check it out. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So Everyone who plays one, we get very good feedback from yeah. them. Yeah, so it's great. So check that one out. It's the B one uh, that's available now. Um, and then, I guess, couple, you know, just moving on through the months, we've, we've just announced another couple of new products. Um, the first one is the Stage Man 80. Now, I, I've not really even seen this yet. I've seen images of it and I've seen it, you know, but I've not really got my hands on it and had much time with it. Uh, we get actually get ours tomorrow, so I'm quite excited about seeing that because I've done very a bit of research on it. And, again, something very corgy in that it's very different and it kind of links lots of products together. So you've, cause what it, Well, let, let's see what it is. So it's a Korg Stage Man 80. So what is it? Well, it's an amp, an 80-watt amp, so a 40-watt stereo amp, battery-powered, with kind of a, a drum machine built in it. I, I, it is a drum machine, but how would you describe it, Lou? What's the better way of putting it? It is a drum machine, but it's not like a you kind of the drum machine as you would perceive it, because it, it uses some very clever techniques to capture real drum recordings and loops, mm. and then kind of uh, overlap them when you change the tempo. Yeah. Um, to maintain that feel. So I was playing around with one the other day, actually, and it's just amazing how how you feel the groove of the, the drum machine, which you don't normally get with drum machines, to be honest. So it's musical rather it's than musical. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. very rigid. It has okay. feel, yeah, yeah, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So there's lots of patterns built in, all different styles. Obviously, you can change the tempo, and you have different variations as well. And you can hook up a, a pedal to it, can't you? Yeah, Vox, yeah. Vox uh, VF. Three That's foot switch, is that right? Five, 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 sorry, yeah, so yeah, yeah, so you get the foot switch you can control, start, stop, various other 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 things. On a live there. environment, you don't actually have to go over. Yeah, the so it's great for gigging. If only um, you could record with it. Can you imagine if they put a recorder in there? That'd be great. I think they have. It? Have they? Fantastic. <laughs> That's great news. Isn't it? I mean, that is that is a really good thing. It is it? indeed. Yeah. So you can actually record on there as well. So you could actually plug a bass in, record a bass line. Along to the drummer, of course. Uh, yeah, and it just records straight to SD cards. Yeah, so you Dead put easy. your SD so card in there. So it's great for, for, yeah. for live use. It's got handles on it, so it's great for transportation. You can actually put it on a speaker pole. Great. So that's great for when you're gigging live. Uh, and it's also, if you wanted to put it on the floor or on a desk, it's got foldy leggies. 
type things. L- little legs. Little legs, <coughs> yeah. So they fold out. What's he too short for? Uh, He's got little legs. <laughs> Sorry. That's terrible. terrible. That is terrible. Apologies. Well, That's not mine either. It's probably uh, copyrighted. Yeah, we'll, we'll edit that Apologies. one out. So we'll edit that out. <laughs> so yeah, so I mean... It, it, so just so, so you what sort of people would use this? Well, well, what would you use it for? Well, obviously you can use it at home. You can use it because obviously it's got the standard things in like a tuner for your guitar, etc. Yeah. You've got an acoustic stage function, so you press it and it gives you like a it's bit like more ambience. Yeah, like a three D yeah. type yeah. effect. So it's great for use at home. You could use it live situation. It's battery powered, so it's great for busking. Yeah. You could use it for that. Um, a little acoustic play would be nice for as well, wouldn't it? So yeah. Well, you know, how many people do you it? see busking? I forget what they're called now, but buskers. No, no okay. the little box that you can buy, and it's got a jack lead in it. And you plug it into an amp, and then you stand on it, and it does like a, a thud sound. Stump box. And you pay eighty quid for it to yeah, do yeah. a thump. It's called a stump box. That's it. Yeah, we. There you go. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. so imagine you know a lot of people use them. Looks blown away by that. <laughs> no, they do honestly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's yeah, like a, it. a box. Um, so, well, check that out. But what <laughs> the, but, I mean, this really is kind of that. But obviously, imagine you instead of having just a stomp box with a thud or a bass drum, I've seen buskers just use a bass drum and a bass drum pedal. Even that just takes it all that away. Yeah, because you've actually got yeah, you've that. got a full drummer, um, and it really you know makes your performance feel more alive. So that's that. That's the Korg Stage Man eighty. So that's definitely worth um, checking out, and then. The other new thing, which I have not seen yet, which is due this month, is the Korg plug key. Oh, yeah. This is, uh... So I, I've read it, what it is, on a piece of paper. That's all I know. So, Luke, yeah, I'm sure you've seen one. Yeah, I've seen one, yeah. It's really good, actually. It's, um, it's a little box which you can plug into your phone. Right. It's got a lightning adapter on it, so you can plug it into iOS, yeah. um, iPad or iPhone. And what it basically is is, a, is an interface for audio. But also MIDI. Ah, right. Okay. So it works really well if you're kind of using your iPad or your iPhone in a kind of studio environment because mm. it allows you to um, not only connect to a MIDI any MIDI keyboard to it, yeah, but also connect audio out of it to get that kind of pristine audio quality. So if you've got one of our apps, mm. it allows you to then record that really easily or just monitor it. Because really I, nice I, I, I am I right in saying that products like this have been done before, but they've been audio or they've been MIDI. But there's yeah. never really been anything together. That as far does as I know, both. I don't think there is anything that combines them. Yeah. See, that's that's you yeah, know, there's unique. A, there's actually, other brands that, that do <clears> similar <throat> things um, for guitarists as well for the you know apps which have guitar course, yeah, yeah. effects and things like that. But as far as I know, this is the only one that combines the two, which marries up beautifully with with our our apps. You know, like yeah. Gadget and EMS Twenty and all those amazing apps that Cork do as well. Cool. Well, that's kind so, of open to everyone, isn't it? I mean, that, anyone who has a modern Apple device or it's just it, it, anyone could use that for pretty much any purpose, yeah, even if it's just right. playing music back at home. Even, you want a better yeah, quality. Exactly, even if you just wanted to play your iTunes through some, and get some, uh, some proper quarter-inch jacks out of it. Yeah, because yeah. I think that's the thing with, with... I mean, how much is a lightning thingy camera connection kit Probably thing now? pounds, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. They're <laughs> about 30 quid or something, aren't they? So yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is, you know, when you think of that and you deduct that cost from it, it, I mean, it's, it, becoming yeah, quite it's already crappy, affordable, yeah. but this then becomes like... I'm not sure the exact price of it, but it's um, sort of like 50 to £60, pounds, I think, something like that. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, it's, you know, phenomenal uh, price point for yeah. what it does, you know. So so that's that. So then we move on. Well, there's one more uh, interesting core product, but we'll talk about it later, because I want to move on to Samsung. So the first product for me that I love um, is a new product, but it's taken from a product that uh, I've used for... Um, a number of months now uh, you're probably familiar with it it's the XP1000 um, oh, well, which is our good, portable yeah. PA system so it's a thousand watts it all kind of folds together clips together um, it's got effects on it it's uh, 10 channels it can use our uh, it's Bluetooth of course you can use our XPD microphone system with it which we'll come on to uh, a bit later but that's been out now for a good few months but we've now issued a smaller version of that. So it's the same unit, it's exactly the same, but it's smaller, and it's 800 watts. So I think it opens it up to a few more genres maybe, you know, because it's smaller, it's more portable, I guess. And the um, is this is the one with the speakers, that they're, they're 10-inch instead of 12, is yeah, that right? Yeah, so okay, it's slightly so it's smaller, smaller well. and okay. the wattage is down. But things like the, you know, the Bluetooth, 
the effects. And the thing with the effects, just going back to the 800 and the 1000, is it's not just... There are devices out there already that do a similar thing, but number one, they generally aren't Bluetooth. And when they say effects, it means reverb. Mm. You know, yeah. this is... Rather than a bank of effects. Yes, yeah. this is a proper bank of, of different effects. Is this got, has it got the same design as the XP1000 where they, yep. they clip together? Yeah, because that's that the other thing. thing that's really good. Yeah, you, normally with these kind of things, the mixer goes in the back of one speaker, and then in the back you've got like an empty hole for like your mics and your leads and sandwiches. all that kind of stuff. Yep. Sandwiches. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> the, the beauty with this is the two speakers then slot together to be carried as one. Nice. Okay. So that's pretty cool. Uh, obviously, pole mountable. Um, again, there are other products that have been out there before that you know you can't put them on a pole, but you know this one you can do that as well. And well, they, they, do they sit as kickback as well, so you could actually use them as, as yeah, monitors? Yeah, you can use them like little wedges as well, which is quite nice because you can angle them when they're on the floor. And in fact, yeah. these one, this the eight hundred, you've got line monitor out, I think, as well, so you could okay. actually you could extend to other monitors as well. So essentially, cool. you could have one down the front of a stage. Yeah, and you'd literally use them as monitors. Yeah. 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 Everyone loves a wedge. Everyone does. Wedge. Absolutely. Except wedgie, wedgie that were at school. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever have a wedgie at school? I oh, sorry, you've lost me with the accent again. Sorry. Can you? A, we <laughs> a wedgie. Wedgie is that? You know where they like grab your underpants at the back and they pull up really hard. Oh, like, yeah, but I thought that was a good thing. Is that a bad thing? We should move on. Yeah, we'll come back to that. <laughs> so yeah, so <laughs> check out the XP eight hundred. Um, I guess while we're talking of um, portable PA, I think we we'll, should do a bit of a refresh on the rest of the range that we do, because that joins, the, the Expedition range is the 1000 of course and the 800, but under that we do a range of portable PA, which is three three units now. Yep. So we start with the Express, so this is basically a 30 watt battery powered speaker. No frills, three channel I believe, 30 watts, Great for barbecues, that kind of stuff. And it's then got Bluetooth on it. Bluetooth, it? of course. And it course. does have the USB slot for the XPD yep. uh, mic system that you mentioned that we'll get to. Uh, and then we do a 60-watt version. Um, again, wedgie. So this time you can wedge it. Great for you know similar uses, of course, battery power, Bluetooth, etc. But with it being in a wedge format, you could also use it for a monitor, of course, but you could use it for things like digital drum kits. Yeah. So if anyone's got a digital drum kit... You can use that to power that, 60 watts, uh, you know, ample power. And then my personal favourite in the whole range, to be honest, is the XP106. I can cover that. Oh, Absolutely yeah. love so it. So it's great. So this is now 100 watts. It's four channels. Um, it comes in two variants. So we've got the XP106W, which includes uh, a microphone, a wireless microphone. Or we just do the standard XP106, which has a mic with a wire. So again, we should probably value. try and list people that this isn't good for because that's going to be a lot quicker than actually listing the people that's going to work for it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. So, you can use the, 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 the thing is, so many things. well, I've seen them used for all sorts, you know, but you know, you could use it for what could you use it for? Well, I've, I've got one at the moment, so oh, in, okay, in, so what have you used? Well, in, in the last two weeks, um, they were both birthday parties, but one was for my one year old and then one was for my mother in law. And we all have mother-in-laws, you know, full well, if that goes wrong, you're in yeah. a lot of trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's got like a 20-hour 20, 20 battery life on it, yep. which is so unbelievable. So you can take it out in the park or, yeah. or do whatever? Well, one of them was in the park. Ah, well, there in you fact, go. So, I had yeah. people walking past us, and I was, you know, Brilliant. trying to send them to the local dealers to go and check them out. Yeah, uh, so... And this um, is Bluetooth as well, right? Bluetooth as well, Bluetooth. so you could use it for a birthday party, you could use it at home just for playing your iPad through it, your iPod through it. That's what I really like, if you're in a kind of a party <clears> situation and... Different people have got different tunes on the phones and stuff like that. It's yeah, just ideal comes that, with a mic. It? So yeah. if you're like my dad and you're like having a drink and you're getting drunk and singing Elvis, <laughs> karaoke, uh, action. karaoke yeah. action. It's good you for that. Yeah, yeah, you can use it for <laughs> um, pub quiz. Oh, the other thing is, there's one yeah. box. The thing that I did sort of discover the other day is actually the throw of the sound is really wide. So mm. some people assume by having one speaker that you're not going to get this big wide sound but yeah. absolutely not the case yeah pole mountable really so you could use it for um, fitness it's quite popular yeah the old Zumba classes and all that uh, dance bingo bingo bingo's yeah. a good one yeah. bingo difficult word for me to say with my <laughs> northern accent yeah, yeah. Bingo. you could do a beetle drive with it couldn't you <laughs> yeah. beetle drive yeah. now yeah. everybody in the north loves a beetle drive I bet you don't remember what it'd be I know you're just no actually taking is. the mick out of me there but do you know what a beetle drive is I, I don't know I there you know. go it's just <laughs> absolutely yeah. so a beetle drive northern thing I'm surprised you've never heard of a I've beetle drive. I've never heard of it, no. Right, so imagine the I'm tension. I'm going to go and get a drink. You carry no, on. no, seriously, it's <laughs> worth staying because <laughs> okay, fine, right. imagine the tension, right? 
you're in a room, three of you, playing Beetle Drive. And the aim of the game is to draw Beetle. That's the aim of the game. So what you do, you split it down to different <laughs> sections. So you have like a head and a body and legs. Is it six legs? Four legs? How many legs uh, is it? Insects? The Cork six. podcast will continue shortly. <laughs> no, no, bear with me. Please continue hey, to hold. Stop it. Seriously, you ask me the question, so I'm telling you. So what you do you is you give each part no, you give each part of the beetle a number. So a head might be a six or whatever. And then you you have to write an order. So you might have to just start with a head and then a body and then the legs or whatever. And the aim that you roll a dice. So if you roll a six, oh I've got a head. You roll, I've got four. Oh, you haven't done it this time. And that's it. The tension involved in a beetle drive, completing this beetle, and you you know, an announcer on your XP one oh six going, Oh, he's got a four, sorry. That's what a beat on drive is. You, obviously, you can't... You, no one does them anymore. I'll give it a bit. Yeah, if, if, anyone, <laughs> if anyone's still listening... I'm not selling this very like well, <laughs> but a beetle <laughs> drive, along with potato pie and peas, <laughs> or as in Wigan, they have peewee. Remember peewee? Pee no. Peewee? Never heard of... God, you need to get up north. So peewee, right, was when you didn't have enough money to buy peas. <laughs> what? So you just got the juice, and it was called peewee, and you put it over your chips... That's why we haven't had it down south because we've always got to be careful here, haven't we? Yeah. Don't, we, don't, we don't know, know what's south do don't, don't Yeah, no. spud pie and peas, beetle drive on. Ah, oh, I'll tell you what, fantastic night out that. Thank goodness we had television. That's <laughs> yes. what I'm saying. That's, uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. so that completes the, ex, uh, the, um, the portable PA uh, system. So we've got the three entry level ones and then we do the expedition systems above that. So, moving on, we look at headphones. Now, Andy, you've seen these. I have indeed. We are, we did, we've got the prototypes, we've listened to them, we've, we've lost them. <laughs> we've lost them. <laughs> yeah, we were, I don't know why. Well, I, Andy, we, it was you, wasn't it, that, that lost them? So no, no. If, think, if you see these headphones, <laughs> if you'd like to return them at Korg, to, to, to Korg UK. <laughs> Um, didn't, didn't, didn't you last have them, in fact? And I left an entire day before I could have possibly lost them. <laughs> no, fine. basically you know, what we did, we had the know. prototypes, which we took to a, um, a show, yep. and then obviously the stocks come back, and we've just misplaced them. They will turn up. They're so let's, so yeah. the Z series headphones. Yes, yeah, the brand new series, and it's, kind of, it's a bit of a departure from what Samson have done before, and mm. the fact that they've, rather than being the sort of lower end sort of price bracket, they've, they've gone a little higher, and actually... Something like the Z fifty fives, for example, they go up above the hundred and fifty pound mark, and right. traditionally they've not really done that. But what they've done with them is just superb. There's four in the range, so you've got the Z thirty five, the forty five, the fifty fives, and one more, which would be the twenty five, wouldn't 25, it? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. That's it. Well not, not in that order. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I mean, the, the big thing is that really you need to get into dealers. You need to go and check these out. Um, now, I like. Can I just say, I, I when I first saw these, I like these simply because for me. You know, mid thirties. I'm not cool anymore. I'm not trendy. I'm not going to buy a anymore. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm not going to buy a, a set of you know Beats headphones or whatever because I'll just look an idiot. And that doesn't matter how old you are. I, well, no, yeah. absolutely. But yeah. you, for me, right, you've got headphones generally that look a bit old fashioned, a bit like yeah. your granddad had with his record player or whatever. And then you've got Beats headphones, which are silly colours, and you know they're not for me. And I love the style of these because they're dead modern. The the you know black style the, they look really really good they're really worth checking out but they actually sound good as well that's the thing of course and they, they still have because don't forget the old, I thought the old um, Samsung headphones that we did previously were, were great anyway yeah absolutely and this really I think rebrands them they sound better they look better um, well like Andy said they've never really gone to this level before have no they, Samsung so. well it's just things like detachable <coughs> cable so it's going up to the the professional studio yeah. level rather yeah. than having to replace it you know. These things have value. Um, the yes. big thing, something like the Z55, for example, to give you an idea, I think the, the frequency response in those is 10 hertz to 25k, right. which right. is f absolutely huge. I mean, you yeah. can't hear that low, but you no. feel that low. So yeah. dep if it is for the production level, bits and pieces, you're going to mm. hear all those frequencies. They're very, very flat, um, but not so flat like your kind of your traditional yeah. DT series stuff, yeah. which is nothing wrong yeah. with. You know, lots of people like to work with those. The yeah. thing with the headphone is you get used to using your headphones, but That's right. we've had some big people review these, haven't we? And they've been... You know, Steve Levine. Yeah, Steve well, Levine. Which yeah, we'll yeah. come on to later. Yeah. Um, but his, his big thing that I completely agree with is if you are going to look for new headphones, you go and check them out, you should listen to these because they they're up there with the best of them. I think Sound on Sound had some nice things to say about these as well, didn't they? They did, yeah. yeah. Um, they, we had a review. I don't think it's gone out yet, 
but I, I remember it being like I've seen the review and it's really really good so it's yeah. worth checking out so it's sound on sound and obviously they know their beans when it comes to well all audio but especially headphones and stuff like that so, yeah yeah so yeah, there you go. So the name is good. So when are they? When are they out? Are they the next month? This month? This month? This, this month. month? Yeah, yeah. By the time this is streaming, in theory, they should be uh, yeah, on the shelves. Yeah, so that's yeah. the the Z series headphones. So just to recap, we start with the Z twenty five, thirty five, forty five, and then of course the fifty five. So that's the Z series headphones. Um, now the next kind of product that I really like now th this has been out a while now for a well say a while it's been out uh, back end of last year but for me th we've found a new use for this product and we, we've referenced it just with the portable PA it's called the XPD system now what it is it's a wireless mic so you could have a lav system you could have a headset you could have a, a handheld mic and I guess the original idea for it was to be used with the portable PA systems that we do because as well as the, the, the microphone, it comes with a Bluetooth dongle. So you can put that in, the, in a USB socket in the back of your portable PA, and it works. It becomes a wireless mic. And obviously inside that is a driver, so you don't just have to use it with your portable PA. You can plug it into your laptop, for example, oh, if you're doing recordings. That's yeah. great. Yeah. However, one thing we have found out uh, by a gentleman from the BBC, uh, the Gadget Show that we attended this year, is that you could actually... If you have a lightning connector camera kit um, lead for your iPhone, your iPad of course, you can connect your Bluetooth dongle to it and you can record audio on your, on your phone. Right. So That's it's really brilliant. Cool. So imagine, yeah. right, and when we're, we're demonstrating this, or he was you know, saying, will this work, let's try it out, etc. This thing is £90. You know, it... If you imagine you, you people that go out and do outside broadcasting or want to do some podcasts or whatever they want to do, it's hundreds of pounds normally. Yeah, you need a field recorder, you need all your yeah, mics. Yeah, so, I mean, and the thing yeah, is, you, you could imagine it where you wanted to do something, let's take the gadget show as an example, and you're down a busy corridor and you want to, like, kind of come through the crowds doing your piece to camera or whatever, you can stand at what your guy can stand at one end with your iPhone doing high-quality video, because iPhones now are, do really, really good quality video, but the audio is always a bit naff. So you could actually use this, and then you could do your piece to camera, walking down a long corridor, and you're getting high-quality audio and high-quality video. It's, yeah, it's really bringing into line the audio side of it with the video, which is fantastic on yeah. phones now. <clears throat> and again, for mm -hmm. under £100 to get in high-quality audio, it's just it's phenomenal. And so, so is it just a handheld? Or do no, they do... they do a headset version uh, and a lav lapel system as well. So you've got three to choose from, and they're all under £100. So this would be great for things like schools and churches. Education, and great, churches, yeah. Yeah. Beetle drives. Beetle drives. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, even if you're in, in like a band though, if you wanted to like make music videos or something, you could yeah. you could do bits and pieces yeah, with that, sure. couldn't you? Yeah. Just, just to pick up bits well, and Well, you know, points. obviously, what, what say, well, say you're at home uh, or you're playing with your band and you're having a jam session, just put your video on, put your camera on with a, with a mic, yeah. jam for a couple of hours and then you can all laugh at you. Your yeah, <laughs> yeah. rehearse or whatever, you know. Similar to like now, we could have maybe set up a camera and a mic while we're doing this podcast, and we can like, oh my god, I can't believe you said it, that. It's enough that I have to look at you. Don't make, don't make them do it as well. Yeah, that's, no. you know, that's Good a, point. Now, now. So yeah, that's the X, the Samsung XPD system. So then, moving on from that, the the last thing really for Samsung so far this year that's been announced are the new DI boxes. Now, uh, the DI boxes are amazing. I, I love these because, number one, the build quality. So, actually, you two carry on talking. There's one over there. I'm going to go and grab it. We're, right. at, yeah, yeah. we're at Cord Towers at the minute, locked in the dungeon. <laughs> so, if you can hear any noise, it sounds like we're a bit in a ship, I think, at the minute. I don't... Ship. Ship. Just yeah, so a few grab things creaking here and there. So, yeah. you tell the folks about the Samsung DI boxes. Well, these are the brand new ones. Are you right over there? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's all right. He's made it. Don't worry. He's on his way back. Um, so, so this is brand new. There's a load in the range. Yeah, there's a whole range of them, yeah. Um, um, you've got mono, you've got stereo, you've got active and passive. There's a PC one as well. PC one, one. yeah. yeah which is so really good. here it is. Which so one's this you've got here then? This oh, one yes. is the uh, MD2 Pro, which is the uh, stereo direct uh, box. But what I love about them is, because obviously we've done DI boxes before, and if you remember, they were like... Um, sort of a metal unit with kind of four rubber corners. This mm. is like the full 
I mean, they, yeah. you can murder someone with that. It's a serious piece of kit. Isn't it? The weight is amazing. Yeah. It's I've always good if your DI box can double up as self defense on the. <laughs> yeah. If your game's no, not but going so seriously long, though, though you can, oh, we all yeah. know it's you good. can buy a DI box for twenty quid. Yeah, but the chances of that lasting longer than a couple of practices or a couple of gigs or whatever. It's the sort of unglamorous <clears throat> item that you yes. just always need to have in your kit bag. And everybody yeah. in a band or a DJ or whatever needs to have a DI box. I and remember times I've turned up to do a demo or a gig or whatever and you get to the engineer and he's and you give him two jacks and he's like, well, I can't do anything with them. I need XLRs. So this is where this comes into play. So, yeah. Yeah, so, Great. I mean, Andy, do you want to maybe explain what a DI box is? I was going to say, I wonder if, it, if, if everyone had a chance to say Yeah, yeah. It's, essentially, it's something you're going to have near you on stage that you can plug your guitar, your keyboard, or mm. your microphone into, and it sends the signal from the DI box to the desk. Um, you can send it much further out again, any, any loss of quality. So it's, it's like, it's the same as buying a decent lead. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, you know, it's one of those things, you, the, the way to think of it, you buy yourself a really nice sports car, You've got to put fuel in it. The DI box is the fuel for your sports car. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Like that. That. I'm, I'm going to have that. that one. The other thing with this that I don't think they did in the previous DI boxes is, is all the switches are actually kind of, they're just recessed ever so slightly. So actually, when they're on stage, you're yeah, not likely to, to kick a switch by mistake really and, and make a sound man. I mean, obviously, sound men are already angry, but make a sound man more angry. So the other reason to use a DI box, of course, is because of ground loops. Yep. Get rid of any hum and buzz. Yeah, and get a ground lift on there. Especially that's where the PC one's great because you get. People who are making computer music, they might be using a cheaper well, laptop. I mean, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm sure I am wrong, but yeah, I'm sure there are others that, that do this, but I, I've certainly not seen one with, like, phonos in. They're just yeah. dead easy. So yeah. Yeah, great for DJing. So in yeah, total... So 3.5 in as well, so you can actually run out of a, a device of yeah. some sort of MP3 player. Yeah. But again, again, that's a similar issue, isn't it? You can yeah, any harm with absolutely. That. So just to, to kind of recap the full range so I've got the, the, the sheets here there's there's five in the range um, starting from sort of you know cheap as chips you know under £40 really going to you know up to £100 so we've got a mono passive uh, DI we've got a stereo passive DI we've got an active di DI a mono passive uh, DI and then we've got the stereo computer so there's, there's the one, yeah. yeah so there's five in total the, the names the there's the MD1 Pro which is the mono passive the MD2 Pro which is the stereo passive uh, you've got the uh, MDA1 which is the mono active DI the MD1 which is the mono passive DI and then the um, the MCD2 Pro, which is the DJ. Basically, if it has a two in it, you're looking at a stereo. If it's got a one in it, it's, it's mono. Yeah, the other are. thing with the stereos is you can switch them into two single monos as well. So if yeah. you needed to, you don't have to run this in stereo. No, oh, that's, that's good as well. That is good. Yeah. yeah. So they're brand new. So they're available now. So they, we've just had the shipments of these come in. So check these out. And again, I can't stress enough really about how good the build quality is on these it's kind of that wrapped aluminium look to it um they even right down to the packaging you've got color packaging it's kind of like an apple style iphone type box so it's really i mean even right down to the packaging it's it's I super find, find super quality samson in general is just it really surprises you when you get mm. you put them in your hands and think actually this is really serious stuff especially for the amount of money you're paying for it yeah it's yeah it's the incredible. same with the PA when you hear it it's just yeah. it is such a good sound you, mm. you know they've spent time doing it and getting it right yeah and, and you know even going back to kind of when I was in retail or you were as well Andy even, yeah, even that everything that Samson do has a colour box yep so obviously from us retail boys, I used to put them in the window, or put it, they're dead easy to sell, yeah. but they sound great. And like you were saying, you get them out, you touch them, you feel them, you listen to them. The quality is amazing. Even down to like, we'll go back to the headphones a second. What was it that the, the, the cups are made from on some of them? It's lambskin. Lambskin. Lambskin, mm -hmm. which sounds incredibly cruel to me, but yeah. at the same time, you know, if I was on a barbecue, I'd go for it. Yeah. Love yeah. a bit of lamb. <laughs> I think you can use them for a lot, you know, not lambs, but lamb skin. If you're actually using the ear pads for longer, it basically means your ears don't cook. So yeah. if you're in the yeah. middle of a serious sweaty you know, ears, yeah. nothing worse. You're sitting there and going, well, the really thing is, if you, you know, obviously if, you, if you're recording or whatever and you're wearing them for a considerable length of time, you know, you need the comfort, you need them to. And you don't really want to be aware of them, that's the whole thing when you're making music. Aware, you know, that's another word that I struggle aware, with. Yeah. Aware. <laughs> aware. Aware of them. Aware, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so that's again with Samsung. So portable PA, new headphones, DI boxes, 
XPD Systems has an amazing range. So, I mean, we're only in July, so we've got some winter months to come and new products we to should, be announced. I don't think now's the time, but we should actually do the uh, the Samsung story at some point as well, because that's should. fascinating. It's yeah, really, interesting. really interesting. Well, do it now if you want. Okay. I know I'm putting the pressure on. We've got, we, no. we could you've go. not got this written down, but if you want, if you... Well, we're all here, we can, we can work through it together. Oh, go on, man. You, you start us off, and I'll correct you when you're wrong. There was a guy called Do you want a drum roll? No, it started out, um, they, there's a big company over in the States. Um, it's the biggest retailer, I believe, in the United mm-hmm. States, called Sam Ash. Well, there's two, isn't there? There's the your two guitar principal centre, ones, Guitar Centre, yeah, yeah, which yeah. we're, you know, quite famous and then you've got of course, Sam big Ash. stores in famous places but yeah. you've got Sam Ash and those, those are the two main players in the States other music stores are available um, basically Sam's son Sam Ash's son was working in the store ah, I see what they've done there see what they've done yeah <laughs> essentially someone came in asked for a device that would plug piece A into piece B and it didn't exist so essentially he's, he's built that he then got a reputation for being the guy that can solve problems mm. and the solutions company was born so mm. Actually, if you look through the stock which is available from Samson, there's all these little boxes that you can get which will will get point A to point B. That, yeah. And, that just, there's nothing else. And out I, that I think the thing with the whole range is that you've got everything from, you know, full PA systems to um, headphones that we've spoken about before to metal work. So you've got like mic stands, speaker stands, keyboard stands, and they were like, I'm right in saying the first. Uh, wireless microphone. Yeah. Am I right in saying that? First, first U- USB. First USB mic as well. Yeah, first yeah. USB first mic. Bluetooth, is that right as well? Um, not sure. Maybe check that out. Uh, but, uh, allegedly. But, yeah, you know, it's, it's this is not... Because yeah. I often think as well, with the Samsung stuff, you sometimes say, you see a price, you see a product, and you think it's naff because it's cheap. Mm. You know, and this isn't like that with Samsung. I always think you get them, you get it in your hand, you think, God... This is going to be expensive, and then you find out that it's not. And it's yeah, and when you start looking through the catalogue, it's just staggering how many products they make. Three hundred, well. is yeah. it? Three hundred or something yeah. like that. It's it's like you say, it's staggering. The, yeah. the so I mean, the, like everything: wireless mics, USB mics, metal work, headphones, portable PA systems. You name it, it's in there. So I mean, check out Samsung.com. Have a look. Have a look at the uh, the full range um, and check them in for your local dealer. So I think that wraps up uh, the first kind of few months of the year. So I think we'll take a little break and then we'll come back with some news and some one other product which we have not yet mentioned. So we'll see you shortly. Back to the <laughs> Microcast podcast. We have two special guests with us for the second half. Who's here? Uh, we are joined not only with myself and Andrew Pollard and Hello. Luke Edwards, the demigod, but the voice <laughs> you just heard then was uh, Ian Bradshaw, core category manager for the UK. You explain to us all what a demigod is. Well, I heard that Luke was a demigod, and um, <laughs> I, I wondered what exactly that meant. <laughs> Even though I use that phrase often, I, I, I suppose but I should. Look it up. Anyway, Wikipedia provides an image of a dead dog. So <laughs> I'm not quite sure so Luke, where that you are, place is, Luke. <laughs> you are a dead dog. So, and then <laughs> also Gareth Underwood, category manager for Samsung in the UK. How are you, sir? I'm fine, thank you very much. I thought good. I'd come and join this. Brilliant. No, you, you saw us uh, locked away in a room and thought, what are these boys doing? <laughs> join us in the dungeon. You want to come yeah. and join in. So that's great to have you. Thank so you. obviously on our little break then we've just I've actually just seen a plug key, and there's one um, key feature really that we missed out. So Luke, do you want to explain what that yeah, was? Yeah, um, it actually has a little USB port, a mini USB port on the side, which means you can continue to charge your iPad or iPhone whilst using, which is actually a really important thing because if you're using it for a long time, long period of time, mm. then you could potentially run out of battery. So yeah, yeah. So that's the plug key. So. Obviously, Ian has come in because you've overheard that we're going to be talking about the Volker FM. I have. So, one extra amazing product that we've uh, introduced this year so far. So, well, I guess Ian, Luke, do you want to tell us about the Volker FM? Luke. I'll leave you to Demi God. 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 Demi Okay, so the Volker FM, um, brand new addition to our Volker line. Um, 
it's obviously Volca, so it's the same form factor as our other Volcas, the beats, the bass, the keys, and the sample. Uh, but it's very different because, for a start, it's not analog. Um, it's fully digital, and it recreates that very famous synthesis from the 80s called FM synthesis. Everyone know what that is? Frequency modulation. Oh, very good, Gary. Can Gary, you can go. come again straight in there. <laughs> can I leave, <laughs> can I leave now and leave Bef- before, while I'm ahead? Before we blow too much smoke. <laughs> <laughs> can you elaborate, Gary? I can. It's to do with that, how the, the sound is, is carried, as far as I'm aware. It's carried within a, a frequency, a particular range of frequencies, and it's modulated by that particular frequency. Well, you have what they call a carrier and a modulator, and the modulator does exactly what it says, and that is used to create the different types of waveforms. Um, Volker FM has up to six operators, 32 different algorithms, same as uh, the famous synth from the 1980s, so yes, that is... And I'm going to say the name. I'm going to say the Yamaha DX7 because everybody just knows in it. Case <clears throat> so they, no so, so they got FM, and there's me yeah. thinking it stands for fridge magnet. But we'll, <laughs> we'll move on. But obviously, it, great. It's an iconic sound. Everything yeah. from your electric pianos to you can play a Top Gun on it. You know. I mean that era from it came out in 90, 1983. Um, that synth and any record from sort of then till early nineties, you could pretty much guarantee there's one of those on there. So. Yeah, it's just, it's an iconic synth, and we've recreated it in a very small form in our Volkers. But the great <coughs> thing is, it's, it's in a way, it's different from the DX7 because it's in a Volker form, so you've got a little sequencer built in, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, you can use all the, download all the old sounds as well, you can't you? Yeah. There's thousands online, there's and thousands drop online. it in. It's all just SysX data, amazing. so you can just import it via MIDI. And away you go, you've got all those amazing presets and the, the ones, the user sounds that people made over the years. So I think one, one important thing to add about the FM is that, um, as we very well illustrated, explaining FM is, is very difficult to get your head around. And we've put it into a package that makes FM more accessible and easier. So you've got all the deep functionality that you have within the, the DX7 engine, but on the surface we've got controls like envelope, sustain, attack, delay, decay, and also a velocity control. So you can get in there, start creating sounds without having to understand the minefield of FM. It's great, yeah, because you've got it, you've got it all there on the panel, all the basic functions. But if you want to delve deep, you can go into an edit mode and literally tweak every single parameter that mm. was there originally. <clears throat> and it comes with this neat little card, actually, which shows you all of the parameters. So it lists them all so you can easily see what's going on. And then on the flip side of the card, you've got all the different algorithms. So they're all the different routings, basically, what Gareth was talking about earlier with the carriers and the modulators, um, the way they interact with each other, the six yeah. different operators. That's cool. True. And uh, just to sort of add to that as well is there are several um, DX7-type emulators in software format, and most of those allow you to export sounds in the, the same SysX format. So if you're using something like FM7 or DX, however you pronounce that, you can also create or edit sounds on screen and then export them to a Volker FM. Which is wicked as well. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's it just, really cool. It just makes it really accessible um, and coupled with all the thousands of sounds that are available, it, it's just a, it's a really nice package. And so does this sync up with all the other Volkers in the same way? Yeah, then? like I said, same form factor, all the same kind of inputs and outputs. So yeah, you can make a pattern on there, sync it with your Volker Beats or Volker Sample or whatever it is. So that, for me, together. kind of leads yes. on to the next thing, because what we've <clears> we got now, bass, beats, keys, keys sample, FM, yeah. OK Go, uh, the limited edition sample. Um, where do we go? What's next? Vodka and Orange. Vodka and Orange. <laughs> the Volker Vodka and Orange. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <clears throat> for me, you know, obviously we've got a lot of partnership, like things like Namco. Why have we not done like a one with a you know Commodore 64 chip in it or a Namco chip in it I or a SNES well you imagine playing like I'd like to like see a Mega Drive one, Mega Drive one it. playing Afterburner that was amazing yeah I think the challenges with that kind of thing is is getting the agreement from so it is yeah. Yeah. So well, so um, it. <coughs> we've only just managed to sort out the Namco thing with Gavin so <coughs> yeah, which we're going to talk one, about one step later. at a time yeah. and uh, but yeah I mean that for me is the ultimate uh, I said vodka then <laughs> the, ultimate, <laughs> the ultimate vodka what about you Andy what would you like 
see Bacardi. Yeah, 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 yeah no, Disaronic, please. Um, well, it's got to be the Amiga 500 Plus if we're talking down there. Really. That's, 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 that really is the game. Yes. Game, yeah. the, the, the suit Shadow of the Beast on Volker. Yeah, Volca. yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm all over that. <laughs> no, but what, what would you want in a Volker? Do you know what? At the moment, with the range that you've got there, you can get such a thick, full sound. It's I think you need think, what about like better a, brains than me. To what get about like a mixer? Would be cool. Yeah, mixer. Volker, yeah, mixer. Think, yeah, yeah. Or a, uh, on my travels, I've been asked for that a few times. Or a Volker yeah. vocoder, possibly, because yeah. obviously we've got that in the, like microphone Volker, and stuff. Vocal. Volker, 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be nice. As long as you could say it, it'd be all right. Yeah, yeah. Volker. Bit of a tongue twister. Volk, yeah. Spot with a care. A few vodkas. Yeah. yeah, I think there's probably, a, there's probably a lot of inspiration in Gadget actually because there's mm. 12 or so, well, there's more than that now, but yeah. there's all of those type of products in there which are similar kind I of I think thing. what we'll do at the end of this podcast, I think we need to talk about Gadget because it's something I'm not really familiar with, and I think I'm sure a lot of the listeners won't be, is to really explain what that is yeah, and okay. really go into a bit of detail. We'll, we'll do that. Then, yeah. We'll come back to that. given a success. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Know about that. Yeah. So, I mean, going back to the Volker thing, then, what would you guys like to see, Ian? I Luke, think it'd be Gareth. Well, any ideas? If somebody that owns a Volker, the the question I was ask ask myself, what do you buy the guy who's got all the Volkers? And and it comes back to the uh, a marketing campaign I saw years ago, and it was what do you buy the the guy that's got all the gadgets? And it was something to connect them all together. Yeah, and yeah, I think that's yeah. the answer. Really. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. what does the Volker need? It needs a mixer, um, but there's lots of mixers out there for thirty quid. So that's not really going to be mm. if it's just that. So it needs to add a bit more to it. So maybe <clears> power <throat> distribution is mm. something yeah, that's been talked about. Super Nintendo one. Um, <laughs> Maybe some other kind of fu- fu- functionalities with MIDI. I don't know. There's, well, there's all effects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As well. That'd be cool. Um, but it's got to be performance orientated, and it's got to be unique and not something that you can compare um, to something that's already available. Otherwise, it just will get too diluted. Yeah, it has yeah. to have a quirky. It's got to have things on it, it which are specific to Volkers, so the right connections for Volkers. What I love about it as well is this is a range that could potentially go on and on and on and on until we've got like loads of them. Um, you know, so it, it's a range I think that we'll that we'll see for for uh, for many years. Um, so that's you know rounding off the Volker series really. So maybe sending your suggestions. Um, tweet us at, at microcast that's spelled M-I-C-R-O-K-A-S-T um, so I mean next on the um, agenda really is talking about some of the videos that we've released this week on the Korg and Samson YouTube channels so obviously while we've got Gareth here you've spent a bit of time with Steve Levine so. yeah well it, it's funny because I mean obviously Steve people will know Steve Levine from, from sort of days of old he's done a lot of work with Culture Club and, and bands you could sort of just reel off. I mean, he's, mm. he's, he's Grammy. Grammys and all Grammy, yeah, yeah, Grammys it's mega. And but it's quite interesting because we've had a long-standing relationship with Steve um, on various other products, but he's actually come to us quite a number of times now for Samsung products for a lot of the work he's doing at Lip Up. Yeah. And he's been taking some of the products, and he, he wasn't massive, you know, he wasn't <clears> familiar with some of the range, but as he started to use them, he's actually realised how well designed and how well built they've been made. And on the back of that, he actually offered to come down. Cool. Um, so he's driven down from Liverpool. He came down in, on his own, in his own steam at his own cost purely to talk about some of the DI boxes and some of the new headphones. Brilliant. He's using them now. With, with, uh, you know, he's, he's now got all of the DI boxes in studio. He's using them for, for all the different sort of parts of his, <coughs> his studio work, whether that be the, the, the CD version, which allows you to, to connect in iPads and stuff like that straight in, or more, some of the more traditional ones. And he's done some brilliant videos. And it just shows... Actually, how professional the guy is, you know, yeah, he came yeah. in, we, we, <clears throat> we're quite lucky having people coming in to do videos, but just because someone's a performer or someone's a producer, mm. doesn't necessarily always mean that they can explain how, the, how a product works and explain the benefits of it, and God love me, came in and he went straight through, he did one take of each of the products, and that's now available for people to see and people oh, to great. So that's on the Samsung YouTube channel, I presume? It's on the Samsung, yeah, Samsung Tech <coughs> YouTube channel. And you'll so find them, yeah. There. So that's the new DI boxes and the headphones. Uh, so that's that's the Steve Levine video, so that's great. The other one, for Korg, or other two, because one is a new product which will go on for Gadget at the end uh, of the show, but is John Carpenter on a Kronos. How amazing is that? That is, uh, yeah. Legends. Legends. 
Yeah, I mean, Halloween, Christine, Assault on Precinct 13, Escape from New York, Day Live, The Fog. Day Live, what's that? Day Live, it's the greatest film. I get the impression of a film, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, not really, but John Carpenter, I mean, uh, you know, I grew up watching John Carpenter films and listening to the soundtracks and... I was going to say, grew up with John Carpenter for a minute now. <laughs> no, but that is cool. it's the sort yeah. of thing, you'd, you know, you'd put... Yeah. You know, when your mum and dad are downstairs, I had a TV in my room, you know, I was very lucky, you know, quick Halloween's on. It's I think it's amazing. The fact I'll just you... watch a cheeky bit of Halloween and scare me to this, because it is the greatest it's horror great film of all yeah. time. I just think it's amazing that he actually directed them and did the music. Yeah. yeah, yeah that, that's, that's what's amazing. That what a extreme, talented guy. Extremely I mean, talented. Yeah. But you've, have you not seen There Live? No. Have you seen There Live, Ian? No, I've no. seen uh, I mean, Halloween, Christine, Escape from New York... The Fog, but uh, the fog, there's yeah. a couple on there that yeah. I've missed. But uh, Halloween is just, it's so instantly recognisable. Yeah, yeah, well, I, well, that's why I love about his music in that he's very similar to, I mean, he's not, he's very different, but in terms of the, the hook for me, because when I was a kid, I always used to listen to Philip Glass, and obviously Philip Glass did film soundtracks, he did things like Candyman, if you remember, yeah. remember that. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it was kind of, an eight bar melody it's kind of minimal isn't yeah, it yeah that just sort of kind of went round and round and yeah. round and round and it would just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and that for me is John Carpenter in yeah, a nutshell think definitely. of Halloween that piano hook at the beginning just changes yeah. key and even it stays the same for a long time and then the bass just changes underneath it kind of thing yeah. Well. yeah I think they call that yeah. the build don't they in, the build, in modern yeah. short music yeah. Yeah. yeah where's the drop in that <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah there's no drop no yeah. but on the video <laughs> okay, what was the sound he was talking he talks in the video about um, is is the chord products that he's on throughout the years, and he mentions a sound on the trite and the Trinity was it? What was it Triton. called? Triton, Triton, Triton yeah. Fat. No, um, you have to check it out. But it's yeah. a bass sound that he used to use, and he says whenever he was in doubt, he just, and he just it. uses that <laughs> sound <laughs> 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 because it sounds wicked, you know. And then it, there's also some live videos of him playing some of his stuff. I mean, it's wicked. I mean, to get somebody like that. It's really cool because he's, he's playing his Kronos and then there in the background is a Triton as well. It's just like so yeah, that's his where it's at. Yeah, so that, I mean that's that's amazing. So that's that's worth. So tell us about the they live because I'm really um, they live right. This Get this. Me. I can't remember it really, oh, but good. I remember. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, I'm, right, honestly. Right, no. <laughs> yeah. Hang on. Right, WWF wrestling. Everybody remembers WWF wrestling yeah. or WWE or whatever it is now. WWF. Yeah, right, well, they got sued, around. didn't they, off the panda people? Yeah. So they had to change the name to WWE. But yeah. to be WWF, when it was good, you had Ultimate Warrior and uh, Hulk, Hulk Hogan, and, yeah. Big Boss Man, <laughs> Legion of Doom, Couldn't and all that. Her. And there was one wrestler called Rowdy Roddy Piper. Oh, yeah. Can't remember him. He used to come in and he had like a kilt on. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on. That's but that's that giant haystack. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Big Daddy. Oh, yeah, that's, right. that was Saturday morning TV at its finest in the eighties. Awesome, yeah. um, <laughs> spam, <laughs> spam butties, and anyway, that's a whole different <laughs> that's a whole different conversation. But anyway, they live. So Rowdy Roddy Piper is this wrestler, and he's in it. He's so in when it. I was a kid, it was like I used to watch the WWF, yeah. and it was like, oh, your mates at school would be like, have you seen They Live? He's in it. And like, oh, brilliant! What's this? <laughs> so it's basically <laughs> a film, and. If you watch the trailer, it's shocking. Don't watch the trailer because it doesn't tell you anything about the film. All it says is there's lots of guns in it and it's just naff. But To be fair, that's no, a very 80s trailer. No, no, yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. But the concept of it was, he finds these glasses, right? <laughs> yeah. And he puts the glasses that's on. selling it. <laughs> no, he puts the glasses on and then he can see things that aren't there. So imagine, like, you're walking down the street and you see an advert for Korg Minilog on a wall. And you put the glasses on, and the advert's replaced with, you must buy one today. That's Google wow. Glasses. Isn't yeah, it? it is. Yeah. Subliminal yeah. messaging everywhere. Yeah. It's brilliant. Oh, yeah. So he walks into, like, a you know, shop and, like, looks at all the cereal boxes and all the food, and it's all, like, you must buy this, obey the government, and all. It's really right. weird. But then... <laughs> He, he looks at various people and they're like aliens. <laughs> it's really weird, honestly. <laughs> that, I'm not selling this. I am not selling this. But honestly, they live. You need to watch it. Is he wearing his kilt? No. Oh. But I, do you not remember that quote? <laughs> 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 you don't remember the, 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 the yeah. question is, 
from the point of view of the glasses, are they prescription glasses? Oh, or are they just, standard? just watch it. Also, you look medicated. I mean, <laughs> well, <the obvious laughs> but to say, he should have gone to Spectrum. Do you not remember yeah, that, yeah. that quote? He has a quote in it. Um, he goes into a bank and he goes, "I'm here to uh, kick ass and chew bubble gum, and I'm all out of bubble gum." Not remember that quote? No, <laughs> obviously. Well, we seen it yet. I've not <laughs> saw. No, but that's a famous <laughs> quote. We played. Is it Duke Nukem? We played Duke Nukem yeah, computer yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. That's in that. I'm sure it is. Yeah, I think you it's it, like the same kind of character. I did wonder why he was wearing the kilt. Um, but obviously, with the accent you've just given us, you've yeah. identified that he was. <laughs> he was American. He's not a prequel to Braveheart. Yeah. 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 Prequel to Braveheart. <laughs> it's about aliens and glasses. But check it out. They live. You're all laughing. I've sold it completely <laughs> terribly, but it's well worth watching. I'm so, going to watch it. Yeah, yes, watch it. they live. So check that out. And Dark before you do any of that, check out those videos. So they're on the Korg um, YouTube channel. So he talks about um, a new an album concept that he's got where him and his son was writing a lot of music for films that didn't exist. So they basically got an album deal and shoved it all on an album. So that's great. Uh, and obviously his relationship with Korg over the years. So check that out. So I'm um, going to go and carry in a corner now and have a cry about my terrible They Live uh, synopsis. So we'll just take a break and then we'll be back with some classic gear. back to part three of the Korg Microcast podcast. So before we go into uh, classic gear, we're going to talk about kind of a new product in uh, a feature that I don't really know a lot about called the gadget. Um, so we'll talk about that. So Ian's just booting up his right. iPad. Here okay. we go. So t- what, first and foremost, Ian, what is gadget? So, okay, gadget is a collection of virtual synthesizers that are um, presented within our own iOS-based door. It's, um, there's a huge range of things. There's um, the most recent Kamata, which is a wavetable synthesizer. We've got uh, Brussels, which is a monophonic anthem synthesizer. London, a PCM drum module. Marseille, polyphonic PCM synthesizer, and it just goes through all these different cities God, Lord, isn't that? Um, across the world. I have to say, I didn't realise there was that many. They're yeah. Awesome. And they look no, amazing, amazing, don't they? And, um, Some of them are based <coughs> on classic synths as well. Yeah, so for example, if you go to, um, I believe it's, one. there's a, where are we, there's, there's one which looks uncannily like an Oberheim. I think it's called Dublin, actually. Dublin. No, Dublin, it's not Dublin, but um, there's one in there which is uncanny like an OBXA, and um, because I was in a fortunate position to have custody of an OBXA for some time, it, uh, yeah, it's Phoenix, so Phoenix is, is just like an OBXA. I had one in my studio that I was, well, I said I was looking after it, but I was doing some repairs on it. Yeah, install just, it, in other words. Yeah. And it took you an awful long time to repair it. <laughs> Five years, in fact. <laughs> so, in a nutshell, never lend anything to Ian, because you'll never get it back. But when I got it, it just went, mm, uh, when you switched it on. But um, it was it was fully functional when I parted with it. and um, just it's older. It's older. <laughs> and it now lives in Sweden, apparently, yeah. with, a, with a very talented keyboard player. But um, just to sort of recap, it's... There's 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 um, tons of different gadgets in there that will cover all genres, and when you look at all the different options um, that, that are there, you'll 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 get the idea that there are mm. some obvious hints. Um, but, the great thing is, but the great thing is, it's it's an interface where you can kind of plug them all together and then make sequences. So that's kind of where it really comes into its own, isn't it? Yeah, and what what gadget will also do is you're able to use. Um, synth engines from other iOS apps so we've got our module app which yeah. is piano based keyboard type of thing so you've got pianos in there EPs, clavs, organs and so on you can use those within Gadget as well so it's not you're not confined to just products that are within Gadget so you can add that to it there's also um, an M1 emulator in there from IM1, which is a standalone app as well. MS20, Poly6. MS20, yeah. Poly6, all of that kind of thing. So there's a whole <coughs> bunch of synths in there for many, many possibilities. But what's great about it is that the interface is so simple. It's um, 
it's like a grid based synthesizer, um, sequencer where you can play things in in real time or you can just draw them in. Um, changing velocities, key uh, positions, note lengths, all of that kind of thing. It's just very touch drag or touch to delete cool. and add things. It's just really simple. You, you've got patterns that can be whatever length you set them to. You can get things to loop over and, and gradually build things up. And then you've got a mixer, master effects, etc., etc. So what kind of price are these then to buy? The... It, at the moment, we've got a special offer on the, the ones that have been recently introduced, which is Kamata. Oh, Kamata. So Kamata. Kamata, I mean, just to go on to so, what that is, I mean so that... Kamata is a partnership between Korg and Namco. Bought, sold, yeah. I'm all over yeah. that. Yeah. And it's, it's incredible. It's, it's based on the Namco Custom 30 sound generator in all of their arcade games, so um, instantly recognisable if you're into vintage arcade games. It's got the lovely 8-bit familiar interface of that kind of game console that you used to, I think it was about 10p ago, wasn't mm -hmm. it, or something like that. Um, it's even got a game built into it. There is a game thing. built into it, yeah. yeah. Um, so you, there's, there's lots of different waveforms in there. You can even draw your own waveforms and then... Pr um, shape those through the synth engine to create weird and wonderful modulated grungy sounds it's just it's a whole lot of fun actually and um, anyone that's into chip tune or just wants to do something a little bit nostalgic it, it's brilliant um, also at the same time within that bundle there's a bass synthesizer mm. called Madrid so it's like a bass guitar um, you've got some really Expressive sounds, lots of sound tweaking capabilities, effects, there's slap bass, finger bass, all of those kind of things. Um, it's just nice to add a, a life element to, mm. to your music because when you've got lots of synths, it's great, but by adding a live instrument or a live sounding instrument, for me, that always is like the, the icing on the cake and it, and it separates you from, from whatever else is out there really if they're very much synth focused. Tell you what is quite funny that <laughs> you go down these and you've got like Helsinki, Bilbao, Abu Dhabi, uh, Gladstone, Madrid. I thought I said Darwin is <laughs> in Darwin near Blackburn. <laughs> it's Not like a Darwin, horrible it? town near Blackburn. It, it could be Darwin, it is there a no, Darwin in Darwin. Darwin. <laughs> it's Darwin, yeah. not so Darwin. Well, these Darwin. names are actually quite interesting because they're actually named after the places that they that made them famous. Well, there is a connection yeah. Yeah. of some kind. It could be to do with the engineers or because where the, it's the new one I was reading about it, the Kamata. It's Japan. It's a place where... in Japan, which is where Namco, yeah. a lot of their engineers developed the original sound yeah. and stuff. So it doesn't give too much away, does it? It's no. good. It's, no, it's, it's, good it's, it's really subtle. Um, then the other one is Gladstone, which is an acoustic drum module. Um, again, it it sounds really cool. This thing. It's a very live sounding, there's lots of sound tweaking capabilities, you can assign different samples. It's not nice Gladstone. when you start kind of merging that with electronic drums as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's just nice to layer things like that, and yeah. may, maybe mix and match a, a bit from the more EDM type <coughs> of sounds to the, the more acoustic thing. It, it just It's just another angle really, and an element to it. So, so could you use that plug key we were talking about with this to... So you can make yes. Idea, absolutely ideal for this. Yes. There you go. Yeah. 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 Because so some of the sounds you can get out of this are just mind blowing. Sorry, I, 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 I don't know if I did. You say what price they were? I missed that. It's, uh, at the I, moment, there's the there's a fifty percent off sale, which I believe uh, makes the new the new ones. If you've already got gadget, yeah, um, there's in app purchases, so you can add to it. I think it was seven seven ninety nine. Seven ninety nine. That's just wicked, price, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I, I believe that gadget is twenty nine <coughs> ninety nine. Um, but again, it's on offer at the moment. Yeah. yeah, and that's all through the app store that we get. This. Yeah, yeah. yeah. every app store you see all the prices there. So yeah, okay. that's that's the only way to to buy the iOS products through through Apple. Yeah, so these aren't soft synths; they're actually just apps for. Cool. Yeah. 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 Korg has become a leader in all no, this now, hasn't it? <coughs> Absolutely. Well, yeah. this this is what we're being told, and um, the response and the uh, feedback that we get from people that use this, they just say you're number one. Which I didn't really realise that we were so strong in this category, but. Um, it's a lovely feeling to be told that. Um, the other thing that's quite nice about Gadget is that we've got this um, area called Gadget Cloud where when you've made a song or a tune-up, you can upload it to Gadget Cloud and then you can get other users to rate it or they can do yeah, remixing right, cool. and things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. So it's really nice <coughs> to see what other people are doing and um, 
I think we need to get people involved with that. We do. Yeah, we, do. Yeah. we need to <coughs> send, send some bits in so yeah. we can check them out. Or play, uh, play there is on the a podcast. There is another um, guy I've been talking to recently who's making. A, he's been involved in doing the soundtrack for a movie called Six Pack Sam. It's a bit of a gory. Kind what of used to call me that. <laughs> Long time about many years ago. Got some glasses <coughs> and can see these strange. Listen, robots or anything stop like that, taking the mic out of daily. <laughs> watch it. That's your homework for next podcast. It's Everyone a, yeah. needs to watch daily. <laughs> but um, he, he's done the soundtrack entirely on gadget and really, that's cool. It's yeah. That so, but it is it is quite. Um, 18 rated because I've seen some of the trailers and <laughs> when you're seeing people's guts being pulled out of them with this kind of creepy gadget music <laughs> in the background <laughs> not really sure we should be telling everyone about it but, okay. uh, well, they know now, so six pack Sam check it out and you know what's quite <clears throat> impressive is as you were watching those particular guts being pulled out you were probably sitting there thinking that oh, he used that part of the gadget for that. that's why right. <laughs> yeah. he used that one for that and I can hear that he can yeah. use this and I, I did think that actually, <laughs> but, but, but what he's but he's been he's been working at this for a good number of months, and when we bought out the, the Bluetooth keyboards, he was saying, "Is there any way that I can improve um, my workflow?" And I said, "Oh, well, we've got these new Bluetooth keyboards. You don't have to plug it in. Sent it one, and he said it's doubled his speed now. Wicked. So rather than having <clears> to <throat> use just the touch surface, he's got the option of using that as well as a keyboard." Without any cable, so amazing, cool. So that's the gadget. So check that out, everybody. Must check that out, especially the new uh, Kamata because it's, oh, it's, it's a wicked. must try. Yeah. Uh, and the music that you hear in the intro and the outro, that's the Kamata music, it I is. believe. Yeah. yeah. So there we it go. Is. So <clears throat> we move on. So we've got to come to a, a, a section um, which we're going to do every month called Classic Gear. Um, and obviously, am I right to go now? You can go if you want. Yeah. You've done your bit. You've, you know, two coffees and a tea would be great. <laughs> <laughs> you can take He's my empty cup if you wouldn't yeah, mind. No, I'll get my I'll coat. coat. <laughs> <laughs> We're locked away in the cold dungeon. Um, but yes, thank you for that information. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. We'll see you again soon. So we we'll move on. So the next uh, topic of conversation is the classic gear. So obviously, you know, I think first let's talk a bit about Luke. Because Luke's going to do it, so... Absolutely. So, so Luke, I mean, I've known you now for, what, two years? I know, I think I've read books, but this is your life. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, obviously, um, I remember... Well, you told me a story. You've got to say, the, what was it, a couple of um, months ago, you told me a story where when you were in retail and you sold a piano to a very famous person. So who was that? Who was that? Yeah. So tell us a story. Okay, so the story goes, uh, my first job in retail, straight out of college, was um, in Harrods, department store. And a great place to work, obviously, mm. got to meet quite a few famous people and stuff. But on my first day with a job with um, the company I was working for in Harrods, which was Roland, actually, uh, one of our competitors, but a great company. And first day on the job, I was just kind of getting to grips with things, this and that. The, one of the managers came over and says, yeah, we're having a special guest coming in and we need you to show him around the department. I was like, okay. So, and then um, they said, we're going to have to shut the store. He's coming in at seven o'clock. And that person was Michael Jackson. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, that amazing. Imagine that your first day. <laughs> so do you have a glove on? So yeah, he moonwalked all the way around the world. Yeah. <laughs> Bubbles with him. And I, oh, that's amazing. I mean, it was you know, amazing, yeah. I, I laughed, but that is incredible. I managed to sell him a piano as well, which was oh, even better. Yeah. Did you play his own songs back to Oh, that would be a challenge, very isn't it? Tempted. A bit of Billie Jean. Well, yeah. I don't think I'd, I don't think I'd have to... That would have been dangerous, wouldn't it? It would have been. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, it was I mean, quite thrilling to do that. So, and, I, have um, no, I have nothing as cool as that. <laughs> There's another one. Yeah. There you go, very good. I have good. nothing very as good. cool as that. But when, <laughs> when I was uh, in retail, I once sold a piano to a guy that came in the shop and I was actually playing this piano to someone else and he stood there and he's going, oh, plays a tune, plays a tune. So I, you know, give him this. He went, I love it, I love it. And he was a bit intoxicated, you know, a bit drunk. <laughs> but, you know, it wasn't that bad because he, you know, obviously remembered his pin number and all that and remembered <laughs> where he lived. It's four digits. So, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. the next this, day, I get... If Michael Jackson, I'll be sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no it's, it's not. But the next day, right, I delivery driver rings me and he says, Adam, we've got a problem. And I went, what, what's wrong? He said, this guy doesn't remember ordering this piano. He was that drunk, he couldn't remember spending four and a half grand on a piano. He had it, obviously, but 
Yeah, that was. He, he kept it as well. Yeah, of course he did. Well, he so paid for it. And now's the time to tell us the truth. So, <laughs> did he actually <laughs> buy the piano? It was just. It was. It was really the drunk. Commission? No, 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 no. It was just really drunk. Last day of the month. Yeah. It's mm. funny, isn't it, how drunk people end up buying the really expensive product? You know, you thought they'd end up buying a nice cheap one, but it just so happened that as Adam was, was, was there working are. there. He ended up going he obviously out with came, so you came to see me. He was like, "I'm gonna have you." <laughs> yeah. like, no, but he was like, "Oh, go on, play this and playing it." He's going, "Oh, I'll have it." It's like, "You sure?" Yeah, I'll have it. You're like, <laughs> you're like that ex WWE wrestler. Like, <laughs> I'm sure. I, you have to. You have to uh, send us in. I'm sure he's dead. You know. I think we should have a, a minute silence for Rowdy Roddy Piper because I think he died last year. Did he? Yeah. Oh. Sad tragic. It wouldn't be, wouldn't be good for the podcast though. Yeah. A minute silence. We could do that. Yeah. We're going to have one now, but we're going to cut it out. So <laughs> yeah. we'll see, but we'll just, can you, yeah. can there we go, that was our minute. So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, Andy, have you got any fabulous retail stories? Because you were in retail, obviously, as well. I was in retail, yeah. Well, there's, there's a few, really. There's, you know, it's not quite Michael Jackson, but I've had dealings with a fair few comedians, both actual comedians and customers who <laughs> thought they were funny. <laughs> um, we should have that app running now, actually, shouldn't we? we should, I had a situation where I had Mario and Luigi come <laughs> in the store. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in full fancy dress with a with a facial hair the whole lot, oh, right. and um, Mario funny. decided that he was going to try and nick a keyboard, which <laughs> generally away. happened to be Did a cool on? keyboard. It was a cool Head cross. Off. Really, go and check them out; they're fantastic. <laughs> um, but we we grabbed him, so we didn't let him do that. He then <laughs> just decided to try and get away, and he went down into our cellar. As you do, as you do. Well, he thought it was the way out. Well, he, he was so inebriated, I don't think he knew which way he was up, to be honest. So but he tried to get away. So we, so he basically went down, and we, we closed the hatch and then called the police. Oh, but, no! <laughs> but, but the police took goodness knows how long to turn up, because the, the complaint was, we've just... We've Captured got Mario Super in Mario in the base. Yeah, and, and that's it. So we turned the lights out, and he eventually he went quiet. And uh, the police got him out, he was still alive, so all good. Oh, there we Paperwork go. Paperwork chain went away, so... Yeah. <laughs> the, the Mario story, no, I, I, yeah, my drunk story was not patch on that, but yeah, so maybe we should have that as a feature. Funny retail stories. Yeah, retail stories, yes. Yeah. Very good. Well, we've just done Michael Jackson in the first episode, so it's, yeah, it's basically... Yeah, early, to be yeah. fair, yeah. 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 I didn't John really meet my, uh, famous people. Not that stand. I met Eric Bristol. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I once hung Please. up on Joe Pasquale three times. <laughs> no, seriously, I met Eric Bristol. I know we're, we're laughing there, but were fine. Yeah, yeah, no, this is major worldwide celebrity. I met Eric Bristol. You know, okay. It wasn't in the music shop. It was just it was on his holidays, to be honest. But yeah, so yeah, I don't really have many other famous people. I nearly met the drummer from Coldplay once. Nearly met? I like well, that. I say that. I, I said hello to him and I was going to shake his hand, but I was walking out of the toilets at Lakeside. It was appropriate at the time, so... Oh, I thought you were going to say he gave me the swerve. <laughs> no, yeah. no, none of that. No. Big fan, Coldplay. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, Eric Bristol, that tops your Michael Jackson story. Oh, brilliant, oh, yeah. Was I've met the, with the crafty yeah. cockney and all yeah. that. <laughs> I've met the Queen for what it's worth. Have you? Oh. Yeah. She oh. chatted to me. She was wearing two gloves, though, none of the one glove thing. Oh, how, you hang, hang, how did you wangle that? Oh, it was it's a it's very long time ago. That where I was, <laughs> where I was brought up, there's a small village that's part of the Duchy of Cornwall. Right. Um, and they, she came to visit there, and there was a number of us that at our school that were taken along to do the car parking duties. So nothing very <laughs> exotic. Did you have to present biscuits? As well? was that <laughs> I just biscuits. The thing I remember is that it's being absolutely freezing. It was freezing cold, and we just had these shirt that we we had the, just a, a shirt on. We weren't allowed. Oh, you're naked. Like that. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Waist down. That's so right. what are you doing? Back, like direct back to, your, to a parking space. That's back to Michael Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just, <laughs> we were just <laughs> bringing all these people in. Oh yeah, allegedly. <laughs> we were just bringing all these people in, and she just came and said hello and had a bit of a sing song, a bit of a shuffle, and then she left. She, she had a sing song. She had a sing song. <laughs> yeah. Shuffle. Yeah. So imagine She's the queen. known there, for it. See, if you if you're queen. close to her like I am, you'd know that you you can't take her out anywhere without having a bit of a sing song and shuffle. If you wanna if you wanna do this at home, take out a ten pence piece and just flick. Around the table. There you go. <laughs> yeah. oh, anyway, moving on. So, Luke, classic gear. Yes. So, what have you brought in for us today? Oh, I've actually got a. Now, you can't see this because we are you know, we're not on video, but because I think we should, we'll we tweet. We have it. We do, it's here. <laughs> we'll yeah. tweet some. This is we're it. it you can hear me yeah. playing it. So, um, we didn't want to plug it in and spoil the fun, you know, but we'll tweet some pictures of it and check it out on YouTube. Google it. So what, what? tell us about it. Well, the idea of this kind of series we're going to run in these podcasts is called Classic Gear, and we're going to go through the kind of Korg chronology, if you will. Oh, so it. we're going to start with... the mini- chronology with a K? 
Can be. Yeah, yeah, if you yeah. want it to be. <coughs> <coughs> so we're going to start off with a Mini Korg 700, which is what we've got in front of us. And this is quite... Uh, well, it's a milestone for us because it was the first synth that Korg made. Even though Korg was formed in 1963, this came in 1973. So before that, they were kind of dabbling with mainly drum machines and kind of uh, stuff like that. So this was quite a momentous mm. thing. Um, and it sounds great. Um, it's a contemporary of uh, the Mini Moog or Mini Moog, however you want to say it, and um, our, own, um, our own reissued um, product, which we've done recently, the, the ARP Odyssey. And also the Roland SH-1000-2000. So around that sort of time, they were all there. But the big appeal of the, the Korg Mini 700 was the price, because it was literally half the price of all those other ones. So it was, at that time, sold for about £350, which was a lot of money then, mm. but compared <clears throat> to some of the other stuff out there, really good value. Um, things that are cool about it, there's tuning, for one thing, very stable, apparently, at that time. So that's what gave it an edge over some of the competition. Um, what I really like about the the front of it, because you, you've got basically the keys above and then underneath, a bit like an organ, you've got yeah, the controls. Yeah, I mean, it's cool, that. Yeah, which is really neat. I mean, number one, it's wood. That's Come on, let's yeah, be honest. Yeah. Wooden panels, they don't make them like this anymore. They're no. in the Mac, uh, Minilog, of course, it was bought a lot before, but yeah. they need more wood. It's good to be able to say you've got it, isn't it? So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's really cool as well, because on the front panel there, you've got some interesting terminology, <laughs> yeah. I'll say. So, like the filter, for instance, is called Traveller, <laughs> and it's the American spelling of Traveller, and it's very strange. I don't know why they've called it about that. Anyway, I suppose he's travelling through different frequencies, possibly. I love that. I think that's really good. Yeah, I think yeah, it's yeah, a musical it description. Kind of, yeah, it does, yeah, it does explain it. Um, there's a bender there, yeah, I can see bender, on that yeah. switch. That's, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> what's that do? That bends the pitch. Ah, oh, right, okay. Yeah, um, well, I can't do again. It makes expand. Another one, there's loads. I mean, yeah. like you said, but they probably just do, you know, obviously they're not known terms nowadays. No, but, but they, they're basically equivalents of, of terminology which has been adopted since. Yeah. So, like, percussion um, is actually the decay. So, um, at one end of the fader, it says percussion, but the other end, it says sin singing, which basically means it decays for longer, so they're, yeah. they're singing singing out so yeah it's kind of yeah it's just strange to see all these funny terms on there knowing the modern synths but it sounds great um on the top of the other model which was like it so there's the mini cork 700 which is this one then there was the 700 s which mm -hmm. came out the next year 1974 and it was a uh, it was basically the same thing but they just improved it and tweaked it slightly so they added a second oscillator um and next to the keys on the top which is on this one is actually blank they've added so some basic effects and things like that and cool. ring mod. Um, then later on, again in that same year, they had the 800 DV, which is basically two 700 S's bolted together cool. to give you more polyphony. And it's like I've got an old advert here, and it's quite funny, that it says how to get fat sounds from a thin wallet. Oh, it's which, yeah, like so it's kind of almost like... The mini log, but it is a fat with a with a with, yeah, with it's a with fat with an F. Yeah. So this is the seventies. We didn't have pH fat then. Yeah, before the R and B days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So part of that family were, um, was also then the seven seventy, which came out in nineteen seventy six. Um, but that was a slightly different look because it looked a little bit more lot more like if you're familiar with like the MS twenty and MS ten, mm. where it had the the patch panel kind of in an upright position. So that one kind of bridged the gap then between here, these ones and then when the MS, MS range came yeah. out. Did um, they do, was that because they would be using the studio more than a live or a bit of both? Or um, I've always wondered why they'd, they'd, they'd give you that. I think, well, part of the reason was um, they, they slightly changed the format to give you a little bit more control using the patch cables, I think. Okay. Um, that was the main reason. The keyboard itself, the same kind of level and... Size, I suppose so. if it was laid flat, the thing would be as deep as it is wide. Yeah, which, yeah exactly. No, yeah, it's just more practical. Yeah. And it looks cool. So, um, what I found, when I was doing a bit of research on that, I found something quite interesting out, which was actually some of these synths were actually branded, not just Korg, but Univox as well. And Univox was an American company. It was actually the Korg distributor in America. Um, and the company was called Unicord. Um, this company was sold to Korg in 1985 and they kind of merged 
um, but they were actually a really successful musical instrument company oh, in their right. own right. And they produced instruments like uh, the Univox Superfuzz, which was a pedal, guitar yeah. pedal, popularised by Pete Townsend from The Who, and also the Univibe, which was a Hendrix. kind of signature sound yeah, yeah. for Hendrix. <coughs> yeah. So um, another fun fact about the a Mini Korg 700, which I really like, is the fact the filter in the Volker Keys is exactly the same circuit oh. as in this thing. No way. So yeah. So that's why you've got that amazing quality coming out of the Volker Keys, because it's... It stems from this. Yeah. Well, I'll take some here. pictures of this and we'll uh, tweet, yeah, we'll tweet them out. Yeah, um, it's also famously used by many bands, including Human League, um, The Normal, The Cure, The Cars, Stevie Wonder, apparently. So, yeah, it was um, it was a big hitter in its time. Excellent. So that's the first in a series of Korg. What did you say we we're going to call it? Come on, uh, Korg, Korg, Korg chronology. Chronology with a K. With a K. There yeah. you go. <laughs> so that's that. So I mean, we're nearly at the end of the podcast now. But just lastly, just. Uh, a few notes, really. We mentioned the Kamata, that's uh, before, in the gadget, so that's available now. Uh, and the last two things, really, first and foremost, last month, the PA4X songbook editor uh, was released. So for those of you that have got a PA4X, our top-of-the-range keyboard, this is a piece of software which allows you to, what, Luke, what does it do? So uh, Yeah, it's an editor, so it allows you to um, get all of your data from your songbook in your PA4X, add your own, and then merge that data together. So, yeah. But also quickly rename things. You can, yeah, you do it on your computer keyboard. and it's a lot quicker and easier. It also means, you say your friend's got some nice songbook entries, you can easily merge them into your own. Ah, right, just okay. Software. So, yeah, it's just so a that, neat little kind of... Um, it's not very exciting, but it's just actually it's really neat, yeah, useful. It's, yeah, it's very, very useful. Yeah. So that, that's available now. Uh, and then I guess the last bit of big news for us this month, uh, going right back to the beginning of the show, we talked about the Minilog. Uh, and we've got a new piece of software called the Minilog Librarian that's uh, just come out. Uh, again, completely free. Um, so what does that do? Well, it's a similar kind of thing, isn't it? You can, you've got all your patches in there. Rather than having to scroll through, reorder the order of the sounds, you can do it all with the librarian, import it into the Minilog. Yeah. You can get sounds from artists, from other users. Yeah, well, you've got presets board. included for free, haven't you? Yeah, there's some artist patches which have been done especially for this launch, which is great, and obviously there'll be more coming, and it's always free with Korg, all of these updates are always free, which is good. Um, what you can also do with the librarian is you can save your favourites, because on the mini log you can save eight, eight favourite sounds, and you can do that in the librarian, again, that's just much quicker. So Awesome. Yeah. So that's the mini log librarian. Well, gentlemen, we've reached the end of podcast 001 <laughs> of uh, the Korg Microcast, Korg and Samson podcast. If you have any feedback, questions, anything like that, Send us a tweet at microcast, spelt M I C R O K A S T. I've been your host. My name is Adam Whittle. I've been joined by Andrew Pullen. Goodbye. Luke Edwards. Thanks very much. Ian Bradshaw is no longer with us. He's disappeared. <laughs> Gareth Underwood from Samson. Goodbye. Thank you very much. We shall see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>